And now, making their way into the arena, hailing from the great pro wrestling state of Massachusetts, they are the hosts of the Top of the Cage podcast. Here are Bill and Juice. And thank you again, Rich Palladino, the voice of New England, always making us sound so good. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, it is I. I am the secret producer. I am Bill, joined always by my tag team partner, my wrestling confidant. He is the future booking genius and the prince of pro wrestling podcasts. He is Justin Juice Cannon. Boom. Boom, baby. Juice, this is our first interview episode of the year 2023. And I personally would not have it any other way as we see the return of the Atlantic Pro Wrestling owner, Mike Gerard. Return of the Mike. That was a good one. That was a good one. I'll give you that. Thank you. It took me a total of five seconds to think of it. <laughs> yeah, uh, I loved having him back on, man. Conversation flows so easy with him. A great guest to have. Uh, I love what he's doing with APW. He works so hard there, and I can't wait to see what he has store for 2023. We'll be sure to go out to a few shows. So if you're listening, you're in the New England area, or you're going to be in the New England area for APW during APW show, make sure to go. And check it out because they're on the come up. They got exciting things in the works, including finally getting those uh tag that tag division up and running again, and also plans for the women's division too. Yeah, I am really excited. And they have tons of events coming up, 18 shows booked currently for 2023. And I think Mike said he's looking at four or so more. And that's awesome. You know, that, that definitely puts them in the conversation as one of the more high running shows within the New England area. So many young talent coming out of next gen pro wrestling that they work with. And, you know, it's it's awesome to see. APW is going to be one of those companies to be looking out for in 2023. And I wish them nothing but the best. And also, I wish nothing but the best for Mike, because as we'll talk about, um, you know, he himself is going through a weight loss journey and many other journeys on his road to making APW successful. And we won't hold you back from this interview any longer. So, ladies and gentlemen, here is Mike Girard. Hello, Top of Cage listeners. I am Juice, joined by my tag team partner, Bill, and we have an interview for you once again with the owner of Atlantic Pro Wrestling in New England. It's Mike Gerard again, and this is part two since we talked to him last March. Uh, how are you doing tonight, man? How's everything going in APW and just the life of Mike Gerard? Everything's great, Juice. Uh, you know, we've had some... Uh some trials and tribulations but we got through them in 2022 um and we're looking forward to uh the biggest year in apw history uh right now we have 18 shows scheduled um i'm looking to add probably another four um obviously i'm, I'm i gotta lock down dates for national i definitely want to go back there and then i'm talking with somebody about going to the cape and doing a couple shows in falmouth well, as a couple of residents of New Hampshire, I'm sure we'd be very happy to hear about some Nashua shows. I know uh, before we got going, we were talking about uh, a dairy show coming up in 2023, too. And, you know, with these 18 shows you have booked for this year, can you tell us about some venues that you're excited to be working at? Uh, right now, it's just the, you know, it's the two venues. We're going to be, uh, I have 11 shows at the uh, Newbury Port Outs, which is the home of APW. We've been there for, uh, this will be year five. Um, and then we have seven shows at the Upper Village Hall in Derry uh, currently. Um, I am meeting with the people from uh, the Police Athletic League in Nashua sometime early February uh, to lock down some shows. Um, it quite possibly could be um, similar to some what some other companies are doing. I know Chaotic did it to end the year. 
uh, where you have a show in Nashua on Friday and maybe a show in Derry or Newburyport, depending where it lines up on that that next Saturday. So uh, we're looking. F- uh, I'm looking forward to that. And then, as I said, um, bringing wrestling to the Cape because I, I know nobody's been out that way for quite some time. So there's some interest from some businesses out there that want me to put together a couple of sold shows for for the folks of the Cape. We're uh, specifically in the Cape, like what towns? Um, we're looking at like Falmouth and Hyannis. Um, those will be the the two towns um, that the woman had dis- that the the lady that I had been talking to had discussed. Um, she actually ended up she was a sponsor um, of a couple of the matches in the event in Nashua, um, and she has a nonprofit organization that is very involved in the community on the Cape and and wants to bring wrestling there because she thinks that it will be a positive um, thing to do during the summer for the youth and in the area because she's, she's, you know, just the way the lifestyle is on the Cape. It's, there's not a lot of stuff to do that's not centered around alcohol or partying and, and things of that nature. So she wants to bring in some family friendly stuff. I think that's a great idea. Cause, um, cause both, both last March when I last talked to you, I was living in, in the Cape area and just a couple months this fall. And I'm just looking for wrestling shows to go. And the closest things are in Brockton, which is still like 30 minutes. So it, it would be, it's a good idea to go over there, especially hyenas. Cause that's near where I was. So I'm looking forward to that. I mean, I'm in Nashua now, but <laughs> still, still, uh, still like to see that the Cape are going to get some uh, yeah. wrestling soon. Yeah. I'm looking forward to putting it all together with her. And I mean, we touched a little bit on how much growth APW saw within 2022. You know, obviously the last time we spoke was March of 2022 and a lot has changed since then. So just looking to see, you know, how APW is doing going into 2023 and some of the goals you have set for the company. Uh, well, my goal is, is, as always, is to, to grow a little bit, um, you know, year over year, uh, whether that's um, in uh, fan attendance coming into the shows and, and growing. Um, ultimately, the goal would be to grow out of, you know, the buildings that we're in and find something that's bigger and consistent. Um, you know, but I understand, you know, everybody has budgets and everybody, you know, has, you know, financial responsibilities that they can't always come. Um, but so for me, it's consistency, staying consistent so that every uh time I have a show in Newburyport, I'm filling every seat that I possibly can uh, put in the building. And then the same thing as we move into to Derry. Um, for example, I, I just put the Derry tickets on sale yesterday because I kept getting emails. When's Derry going on sale? When's Derry going on sale? And the second I put it on there within probably two hours, I sold close to 100 tickets for Derry alone. Um, and that building holds, we're, we're limiting it just to see how we because obviously we don't want to jam pack it in the first night. So I'm limiting it to 200 maximum seats. Um, but the people who own the building think that I could get close to 300, which is a little bit more than I can get in Newburyport. So um, I just want to see how the setup is with the ring and the, the locker room area before we go jamming 300 people into the building on night one. That's fair enough. I mean, you don't want to go, uh, two balls to the walls right away and, you know, have something not work. I remember uh, you and I talked at one of the shows in 2022, we were talking about um, in the Newburyport uh, venue, you guys had changed some things up to get a little bit more seating in there. And I know how you guys have it set up in there is really good. I like kind of how, uh, how much, how good the space is utilized, you know, it doesn't feel like you're kind of sitting on top of people, but at the same time, you got plenty of space and you're close to the action, no matter where you're sitting. So I'm pretty confident you guys will figure that one out for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's very, I'm, I'm taking this similar to the approach that I took in Nashua because in Nashua, um, I could, I think I limited it to about 300 people. We ended up with like 270 something, uh, which I think for return to Nashua was outstanding. But that building with the ring and the way that we had the locker room set up, technically I could get close to 600 people in there based on, because the capacity without the ring and everything, uh, just tables and chairs is like 962 people. So if I could put 500 seats in there and fill that twice a year, I'm happy. 
Yeah. And in that Nashua venue too, you had all the space for um, the wrestling merch and like the, the uh, wrestlers tables too. And I mean, uh, that, that I feel like had a ton of space too. And, and it was really cool to see, actually. I feel like that was one of the first wrestling shows I went to where I saw somebody actually selling wrestling memorabilia at it. Yeah. Uh, Fred, the, the, that guy, Frank, he comes, uh, I think it's Frank, Frank, I'm not sure, but he, he travels all around the U S uh, or the Northeast doing like MMA shows, wrestling conventions, things of that nature. Every once in a while, he'll be in Newburyport. Um, obviously you can't have like four tables worth of, of stuff like he had in Nashua, but he'll come in and, and, you know, buy space on one table or two tables in, in Newburyport, but some changes. There's going to be limited space for tables in Newburyport because uh, we're going back to live commentary. Um, so that way, my turnaround time, as I'm sure you guys have noticed, you've been to the shows. Our our presence online with matches is very lacking in the at the moment, and a lot of it is, is that we have to do post uh, post show commentary. So. Uh, we're changing that up for this year. So cuts down on the editing time. Um, and then we'll be able to, I haven't decided if we're going to go the route of Twitch or YouTube um, and put out full shows, um, you know, or, you know, before maybe we'll put out the, the dairy show a few days before we end up going to Newburyport and so on to keep it. And everybody can kind of stay in the loop type deal. Yeah, I remember from our last interview, that was one of the things we had talked about, too, was, um, you know, utilizing platforms like Twitch and other uh, streaming platforms for wrestling. And and I think it's great. Uh, I really enjoy the uh, kind of like the the ambience of like commentary on these indie wrestling shows and seeing them get uploaded to places like YouTube, Twitch. Um, You know, it's really great that you guys are considering that. Um, And I know we, we talked a little bit last time, too, about about like IWTV and fight and um, you know, is there any intentions in 2023 of getting any uh, anything back up on there? If I were to, uh, if, if between those two, I would probably go with fight. Um, uh, I'm trying to, cause the, the fight was under the, the previous owner um, prior to me coming in as like sole or 50% owner. So I'm, I'm working with fight to try and, move everything to my company information. And so that's been kind of a hassle. You know, they have bigger companies than Atlantic Pro Wrestling and Newburyport that they are dealing with currently. So, um, but hopefully at some point in 2023, we'll be able to stream. If not, I'll go to Twitch. And I mean, Twitch seems to be a a pretty uh, wrestling friendly platform um, and, you know, grow my business out that way. For sure. And YouTube definitely is too. I mean, we've seen a lot of companies that's where they start filming, Um, but you're definitely leaning toward Twitch over YouTube or are you still like weighing the options? I'm weighing the options. I have some people, I actually have some people that are looking into the monetary piece, you know, where I'm going to be able to generate enough revenue. I mean, I'm not looking to get rich, but I'm looking, if I'm going to put something out online and I get, you know, we'll just throw a number out there. Say a, a video gets 1,500 hours of, of watch time, we'll say. I want to I wanna know if I get 1,500 on Twitch, am I going to make, we'll say, $50? Or if I get 1,500 on YouTube, am I going to make $75, which is going to pay me more for the content being rolled out? Um, because obviously, you know, anything that I make goes back into the company to make it bigger and better and change some of the things as we go. And it also gives me the flexibility of bringing in some talent that may cost a little bit more. So it's that, you know, continuous revenue to, to bring in names that might put additional people in my building, even if it's just for one night or two nights, uh, depending on, you know, what I can get them for. Yeah. I can tell you as somebody that knows that game a little bit, it's all of like, a foreign language it really is it's some stuff just makes sense and some stuff is just like why why is it this way (laughs) so i mean and then that's why i think i'm weighing fight network or fight also uh because if you sign up for if i do just like a 4.99 package um and you sign up for that i get a you know i get a percentage of that every month 
as long as you're renewing. And then if we have like live events and say, for example, say I do one of my bigger shows, uh, my Battle Royal, my Guild, my Clipper City Rumble in October, I do that live. And maybe we do a $9.99 pay-per-view or a $12.99 pay-per-view. I get 50% of that. So, you know, it, it, that's, that for me is what's going to play into the decision where I'm going to make the most uh, or generate the most revenue back into the company. And is it going to be beneficial to me down the road? And I just want to touch on something that you mentioned really quickly there, and that's the Clipper City Rumble. Uh, we actually had Owen Brody on our podcast after his win at the event. And of course, we praised him for his work and dedication in the pro wrestling business because he is one of the best, has a great mind for it and a great attitude towards it too. Um, so as the person running APW, was Owen an easy choice for uh, winning that? Owen, yeah. Owen Owen definitely is a hard worker. He's improved in the in the four plus years that I've been, that I've known him and worked with them. Um, he's been very helpful to me. Um, and, and, you know, I'm kind of breaking down that fourth wall. So, uh, Micah, you know, he's a bad guy when he's in the ring. He's a, he's, you know, he is what he is, but backstage Owen Brody, Micah Roberts, whatever you want to call him is a very creative individual. He has helped me tremendously. Um, and it's so much so that, I, you know, he, I consider him part of the team. Um, when I have an idea that I can't comprehend where I, where it needs to go in order for it to make sense when it gets to, when it starts at point A and gets to point Z, what do we do in the middle? Micah and Michael would be one of the people, the first people that I call to, to help me uh, put it all together. And he's done that with, believe it or not, he was a big, I told him what I needed. And he was a big part of coming up with the, the, the booking for the rumble, the outcome of the rumble and what's to come off of that. Um, and also um, transitioning two of my singles guys into tag team and how that's going to kind of play out over the next few months. Um, so he, he's, I, I think he's one of the, the most invaluable, the most invaluable people Um that I have on my roster. There, and there's a, there's a ton of them. Like for example, Ilya Markopoulos, uh, Nico Silva, they're always willing to um, give input when they think that they have an idea that might bring the product to that little. And I'm always open to that because I, as I told you guys last time, I'm a businessman. That's what I, I look at it. Bottom line dollars, dollars and cents. And, and then I look at it, um, you see, when the, even when the shows are going on, I'm walking around out in the crowd when I'm not in the ring or doing something backstage to see what's what's happening with the crowd. Are they enjoying it? Are they not enjoying it? And and that's how I can evaluate where I need to go next to to continue to elevate the product on the business side. Um, and I have enough people that can help me on the production and creative side. Yeah, I will definitely say the the presence you guys have made, especially within 2022, has definitely been leaps and bounds from where it was in 20, the beginning of the year. And, you know, definitely excited to see what's going on. But I also wanted to ask you, too, uh, on our last podcast, you were talking about maybe making an appearance in a battle royale for your uh, in-ring debut. And I know uh, this Clipper City Rumble has come and gone. So is there a chance maybe in 2023 we might see you in there? Um, there if I were to say on a sliding scale of one to 10 and uh, 10 being the, it's probably somewhere around a four ish. Um, I've recently hired a nutrition and health coach. So um, I actually just posted today that I'm going on my, per obviously social media, APW, I have to kind of stay present on those um, accounts, but my personal accounts, my personal Twitter, my personal Instagram, TikTok, all that. I'm actually going dark from now until um, April 29th, which just happens to be my 50th birthday. Um, I'm going to, um, on Sunday, I'm going to take my my beginning pictures and then I'm going to just bust ass for the next three plus months and uh, come back on my 50th birthday and hopefully be in, in a better place mentally um, and a better place physically more on the physical side because I feel like I'm solid mentally right now and, and focused. So I'm looking forward to that. And 
I mean, I'll spoil it. I'll tell you, I'm working with Tony Neese from AEW. Um, he's my fitness and nutrition coach that I, that I um, agreed to work with over the next six months. So what's working with Tony? Like, um, I mean, that dude's just jacked such great shape. What's the advice that he gives you? And uh, basically, you? Uh, basically I took a questionnaire, you know, I answered some questions um, about my fitness level now and, and, you know, what my fitness level was growing, you know, as I got older, was I physically active? Um, you know, any restrictions if I had and foods I like to eat foods, I don't like to eat. Um, and he put together a full meal plan. He put together four workouts. Um, you know, I'm doing like back and biceps and then we have, then we have like shoulders and triceps and then we have legs and then cardio and abs. And in between, I do my own cardio because, you know, I'm a runner. Like last time we were on, a, I ran, you know, in November, I ran a 5k, a 10k and a half marathon on three days in a row. So I'm in good shape. I just don't have the physique to go along with the shape. And I think that that's why, because I've always been to the point where I get there, I lose, and then I get bored with it. And I've never had anybody there to push me. So I think that's why for me, the value of having Tony there is what's going to be beneficial to me in the long run. You know, it, and, you know, the plan is, is when I check in every week, he's going to give me um, input on what I might need to tweak or if we need to change the workouts because maybe I've plateaued. Um, I have to send in pictures weekly, you know, side, front, back, um, answer some questions like how was the diet? How did you stick to the food plan? Did you stick to the weight plan? How's your digestion? How's your mental, you know, state? So um, he's been, you know, in the conversations I've had, he's been very, um, very involved and very knowledgeable. And again, like you said, the guy looks like he's chiseled from stone. So. And I have to ask you, like, as a wrestling fan yourself, is it cool to be working with uh, somebody like him? Yeah, actually, I was turned on to him by um, he's I know he's working with a few other people um, in the area. Um, I don't I don't want to share their personal business, but they're the ones that kind of turned me on to that he was doing this. Um, and, you know, I sat down with my wife and said, you know, is this something that we can afford? Because I think it would be helpful for me because now I have two grandbabies. So it's the last time we talked. So I have my two-year-old granddaughter and my eight-month-old grandson. And, um, you know, I want to be around for them. Plus, I have my two daughters. Um, and I want to enjoy retirement with my wife whenever that comes. So um, I'm, looking for, I'm looking forward to getting on the journey. And I think, you know, as I get in better shape, I'll probably go back over to Next Gen and I'll, I'll work with Bud. Um, and, you know, if, if it's something that can be done and my body holds up and I don't feel like I'm ancient, then there's a possibility. It may not be a battle Royal, but it may be something else. Um, I, I kind of thought about it as we were going, as I was starting to get into it. And I just felt like it was putting more of the spotlight on me. And I was always as, the, as the owner of the company, I feel like the spotlight shouldn't be on me. It should be on the talent you know, kind of like the companies that put the owners that put their championships on themselves. Those are, you know, um, I was never a fan of those type of, you know, even my first, Joe Mokley, my business partner, when I first started was the heavyweight champion. When I, when I got involved with APW and I told him on the very first show, we need to get that title off of you because it's a bad look for the company. And that makes sense. I mean, the thing when somebody talks about like a, a wrestling company owner having a championship, the first thing I think of has always been something with the ECW championship. So, I mean, if you want to go out there with a do rag and, you know, all that jazz and just play it up, that could be pretty good. I'm not going to lie, but uh, hopefully you don't go all Vince McMahon. With it. Yeah. I don't think I can pull off a do rag. So, um, but no, I, I, you know, I, it's just one of those things that I'd rather the spotlight be on the Kid V's, on the Monty Aries, on the Cassius Halls, um, you know, on on Ilya and Nico, the guys that go out there and and 
get the fans to love them and conversely get the fans to hate them. So I think Ilya's done that very well. <laughs> yes. Ilya. Um, I looking back over the last four years, you know, Danny Miles carried my company for a while as heavyweight champion for close to a year, and then COVID hit. Um, and then we put the title on Ilya. Um, and he held the title for close to two years before dropping it to Nico. And I couldn't have had anyone else, um, in my opinion. I mean, a select few in my locker room that could carry my company for that long. And I would, I will forever be thankful for, for Ilya doing that. Yeah. Ilya is definitely masterclass in terms of, uh, his his in ring uh, antics definitely sometimes it pissed me off more than it made me want to <laughs> do anything else. But that's what he does. That's what he's good at. And uh, Alia Makarpolis definitely was a great foil. And I know for me, one of my favorite matches of APW in 2022 was that ladder match. And seeing Nico finally overcome and get that championship was great. But I wanted to ask for you personally, what were some of your favorite moments from 2022? Um, some of my favorite moments from 2022 would probably be, um, the debuts, um, the kid V's, um, who has be quickly become a, a fan favorite at, for APW and he's starting to work other places in New England and, and it, it's carrying over there. Uh, Monty Aries, the main shooter, um, Cassius Hall. I've known Cam or Cassius, uh, for close to five years. He's probably one of the hardest workers um, when it comes to training. He's always looking to get better. Um, but if I were to look at it and say, what was my highlight of the year? Um, I would say that the show in Nashua was the number one highlight for me. Um, it was the biggest show ever that I pulled off. Um, I was supposed to have, you know, when when that show was put into motion, I had a business partner and, and we were, you know, we booked all this talent and I got nervous when, once things changed and I became the sole owner of the company because that right there, that show was the most expensive show output wise that I had ever done. You know, talent alone was over $2,000 for that show. Um, and I ended up make, I ended up turning a little bit of a profit um, on the show when the final numbers were done. So for me, that was the biggest thing. And I think that that's why I decided to expand and um, add six shows to date, but hopefully, you know, adding another, you know, uh, another four shows and getting up over 20, which will put me into in my opinion, will put me in a kind of rarefied air here in New England because you got, other than Wrestling Open, Wrestling Open does every Thursday night. They run 50 million shows a year um, but between them and beyond. So that, and that's, that's great. You know, they give a platform weekly for the talent and that's awesome. Um, but I mean, you got WFA that's getting ready to relaunch. They already have 31 shows. I've had conversations with Scott Reed. I know he's planning to add more. Um, and then I know Chaotic has 30 shows already on the books. So to be that other organization that has potentially 20 plus shows on the books for a calendar year, I think that that puts us in uh, a rare conversation for this area. Yeah, and you saying all that just makes me realize how much pro wrestling there's going to be in this area of the year. Yeah, I mean, and that doesn't even include the limitlesses, the proving ground, the um, and NCW, RWA, the, the New England pro wrestling, New England wrestling extreme, or whatever the heck. I mean, there's just so many companies um, that there's going to be no shortage of professional wrestling in in New England. But the biggest thing I'm happy for is that, you know, now we're going to have really three companies operating within the state of New Hampshire between myself, Chaotic, and Wrestling Federation of America. Talk about all this, the, the options we have in wrestling and, and New England. And of course, um, New England, you, you see multiple people go on different shows. Like it's, that's how it works on the indies. But, um, and that is collaboration in one uh, definition of word. But, one we don't really see like 
co put on events in new England much. Is that something you'd like to get into maybe with uh, Scott Reed's relaunching, maybe do like some co uh, events. I think the tough part about having co events um, where it's, you know, whether you do like company a versus company B is company a wants their champions or their people to win their regulars and company B wants their people so it just becomes, uh, you know, for me, it seems like it would be a little bit of infighting, um, you know, because you, you don't want your guys to go out there and look weak. So if your champion's going against his champion, um, you know, you don't want either, you know, neither of us want our champions to look weak. And I think that that's where it gets into that. As for something in New Hampshire, maybe like Wrestleville, that um, happens New Year's weekend with, you know, beyond and uh, pro wrestling grind and blitzkrieg maybe if that's something that like um chaotic us and wfa could come together and have like a weekend like a festival type thing um but our own individual events i think that that would be fabulous and i think it would be great for uh the state of new hampshire um it's just again working uh jointly with other promotions is, is I'm fine. I have found out is, is very difficult. That makes sense. And I, when I went to Vegas and I was there for a little bit, FSW does like co-events all the time. And I always think like how it's it, like you said, it's tough booking champion versus champion. And they found out the formula is don't do champion versus champion. Do uh, your champ has a challenger from the other company and then your company so like say APW and FSW is hosting like the APW champ, but then versus one of their just wrestlers, non-champs. And of course you would go over and I know the results are expected, but it's a little predictable, but it's still like fun ride and new matchups in that sense. So, I mean, right. yeah, I just, I was just curious and like your takes on that since it is something we don't see often in new England. Yeah. And uh, I mean, honestly, I think it's, I think it has to do with the overall perception and, you know, New England being, for lack of a better term, I, I would say the pinnacle um, of independent wrestling. You know, a lot of people that have come through here have gone on to do some massive things in the professional wrestling world. And there are still people that have started here. Like you got Carmelo Hayes, you got Josh Briggs, you got, you know, MJF was big and up and limitless. So um, that's, I think that that's what it is. It's that nobody wants to give up their spot in the rank and file, I guess you would say, um, for lack, you know, back, lack, lack of a better analogy. That's, I think, what it is, is, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to partner with a company that, you know, maybe the fans think is inferior or um, you're, you're superior than, and, and, and hurt your, you know, hurt your, your place in the, in the, in the, in the business, I guess. That's, that's my, that's 100% my opinion. I don't know if anybody else in the area believes that or feels that way. That's just the way I feel about it. Yeah. I and mean, you are entitled to that feeling and opinion always. And I just wanted to mention this quick because you're talking about local talent making it big. Um, I know we haven't talked about it yet because it also happened uh, within the last 24 hours. But um, we saw Sasha Banks slash Mercedes Monet, which, by the way, her new entrance music just going money that I don't know why that like irked me the wrong way, but it really did just bother me I'm, for some I'm, reason. I muted it. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, just kind of saying, you know, and that really shows the magnitude of New England wrestling scene in general. It's just we see all these crazy performers doing these crazy things. I mean, her her showing up to New Japan was something that was rumored for months. And here we are finally seeing it. And uh, I know you yourself are a wrestling fan, too. So I was curious to hear your reaction to seeing her come out. I personally still think that it's a work and that she's going to end up back in WWE. That's my personal opinion. I'm probably wrong. And she's probably Soraya's mystery partner when they're in LA. Um, but I could be wrong there. That could be Mandy Rose at this point. Who knows? Um, because in, in my opinion, WWE did Mandy 
bandy very, very dirty. You know, uh, you know, if I have a pay site and someone leaks my photos that they paid whatever, we'll say maybe she has a set up there for a hundred bucks. If I paid a hundred bucks for a set of and I leaked them, why is Mandy to blame or why is so and so to blame? It's it's not their fault. I mean, good on her. She made a million dollars in the month of December after she got released. Cool. But I think they jumped the gun on it. And I know it has to do with the Mattel deal, but it is what it is. But um, yeah, I mean, wrestling is is blowing up right now. I mean, you got Sasha Banks, Mercedes Monet, and out in uh, New Japan and stardom, potentially going to be in AEW. You got Kenny Omega beating Will Osprey last night, right? Is that who he wrestled? Yeah. Yeah. So that's huge because I know Kenny kind of stepped away from New Japan. And I, I hate to be spoiling. I'm guessing this is coming out way after people have had a chance to, to watch it. You know, but the, it, it, it was cool to see, you know, Machine Gun Kelly or uh, Ken Carl Anderson over there wrestling uh, while he's under contract, even though his match was only like 35 seconds or whatever it was. Yeah, I mean, professional wrestling is just, at, at the peak right now and it's going to be interesting to see what happens is triple h going to be the first one to bring in non-contracted w well other than last year with with uh, uh mickey james and the royal rumble but i think that that was a i'm sorry you got trash bags sent to your house with your stuff in it type gesture um but i mean it, it is in my personal opinion and I'm sure there are a lot of people. It is not beyond the realm of possibility that Kenny Omega is in in the Royal Rumble this year. That's just the way that the business is at this time. And I see no reason why these companies can't work together. Yeah, especially for the Rumble, too. Like, that's always one. I know, I forget what year it was. It was back in, like, the either, I think it was the early 90s where some AAA guys came and uh work to royal rumble like i know like mil mascaris was famous because he eliminated himself he like forgot the rules of the match or something like that and he climbed over the top rope onto the top rope the top turnbuckle and jumped and did like a double axe handle to somebody on the outside and the announcers were like okay uh, he he eliminated himself i guess so um i know that made them look a little silly but like but like you're saying with mickey james too like yeah it's awesome she walked out with the impact knockouts championship and you know, she, she had a great showing and it's one of those things where it's like, you don't expect this person to win, but you totally could see it. And it's the shock factor. It's the, right. Oh, maybe we'd see it. And we even saw it earlier in the year. We actually voted uh, not too long ago. Juice and I did our episode on uh, 20, our 2022 awards superlatives. And I personally was saying that like the forbidden door pay-per-view was one of the best pay-per-views that we got put on this year. Um, you know, it, it's we saw some great matches and some great collaboration between New Japan and AEW. And, you know, I, I think moving forward in 2023, I personally would like to see a lot more of that. Forbidden Door was a great pay-per-view. AEW continues to bring in some great talent from other organizations. Um, you're seeing WWE, like I said, they're allowing people to work in in New Japan, like, just previously to Wrestle Kingdom, you had um, uh, you had Shinsuke Nakamura wrestling the Great Muda over there. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, I think it's great for the business, and hopefully, it continues. And I know one thing we wanted to make sure we touched upon too, just kind of bringing it back to the world of APW. And of course, how you guys are going to be kicking off this new year is with Revolution 2 coming up on January 21st, coming out of Newburyport, Massachusetts. Uh, you yourself are actually scheduled for that show to be announcing four teams that will compete for the new tag team champions. So uh, can you talk to us a little bit about how these new titles came to be and kind of what we can expect out of this new tournament? Uh, yeah, so actually we just announced the teams. I put a video out um, on, I want to say either January 1st or the night before. Um, and it's a one night tournament. All four teams will, will wrestle in the first round. Um, and then later in the evening, uh, the two, the two teams that win will compete for the new titles. Um, they came about because, um, Gallo, um, 
uh, half a night breed, which is, again, in my opinion, one of the greatest tag teams in New England history and also in APW, uh, suffered an injury in late 2021, um, which ultimately ended his in-ring career. He continues to train the, the students that you see on our shows and some of our mainstays like our New England champion and and Kid V and Monty Aries and Cassius Hall and and a great selection of the kids, the young young talent that were in the Battle Royal. Um, so my plan was to retire the old titles. Basically, we did that at the uh, November show, which also ended up being uh, four years to the day when Nightbreed won their actual won their first tag team titles with APW. Um, so. I felt with Nightbreed um, kind of finally being um, laid to rest, so to speak, um, it was time to uh, put the old or the, the, the uh, tag team titles that I created and, and um, to rest as well. Um, and then we came out with the new design, which is, it's kind of a take on the Global Force Tag Team Championships. Um, only uh, we we put a little tweak in there where instead of one eagle on each belt, there's two eagles. Um, so so we're going to um, and the four teams are Vanity Vixen and Setherin. Um, so we're eliminating gender gender, you know, mixed tag teams, whatever you want to call it, intergender. Um, not really a fan of the intergender term, um, but male, female teams, male, male teams, all female teams, doesn't matter. If you want to come in and compete for the any belt in APW, you're able to do so. Um, so the first team was um, uh, Setherin and Vandy Vixen. Um, we we'll also have Gal Barquet and Ilya Markopoulos. I think they're calling themselves the Mediterranean men. Um, don't know. Ilya tossed it out there, so I kind of like it. Um, and then we have um, TJ Crawford and Paris Van Dale making their second appearance. Um, they had a great showing against Jen or uh, Vanity and, and Sethrin in their debut. And then the return of uh, two-time APW Tag Team Champions um, MSP uh, will be in the tournament as well. Um, so again, the winners of those two matches will go on to wrestle later in the night. And when January 21st revolution two is over, we'll have brand new tag team champions. Um, and it'll, there'll be the, whoever wins the tournament will be the first tag team champions in over a year in APW. Um, the last, last team to officially hold the belt uh, was Nightbreed. So of those four teams, who do you think is going to walk away the, the title if you're just making, I mean, I know <laughs> you're the fucker, but if you're just, you know, a fan. Uh, okay. If I'm a fan, uh, I would want MSP to win the titles. I will be honest with you as the booker of the event, I still have not decided who, um, you know, without letting too much out of the bag, who's going to walk away the champions. Cause we all know, you know, the word predetermined, whatever you want to call it. Um, but yeah, the jury's still out on how it's going to go. I know the fans want it to go one way, but is it better business to go another way? So that's where um, I got to sit down before the show and come up with my pro and con list. But if I'm looking at it from the outside of the four teams, MSP would be the ones that I would like to see win the tournament. Yeah, I know for me personally, uh, we had MSP on. They're one of our first few uh, interviews we did, and and I love those guys. They just bring such infectious energy, and anywhere they go, the crowd loves them, and they always they always have great matches with whoever they mix up with too. Yeah, I can tell. I will. I will tell you now that Matt, they are wrestling TJ Crawford and Paris Van Dale, and that match is opening the show. That MSP is opening the show uh, with. T- uh, with TJ and Paris Van Dillen in the first match of the tournament. Very cool. Very cool. That's exciting. That's definitely exciting to hear. And of course there's other, there's other matches on the card besides these tag team matches. So mm-hmm. what else can we expect from this card overall? Well, you got um, the King Ken Brian Malonis has decided that he is going to, um, that it's his time to, to 
climbed back to the top of APW. He's a former APW heavyweight champion. Um, at the conclusion of our last event, we challenged Nico Silva to a title match. Um, so um, I made that official pretty quickly. Um, and then we have, um, we also have Kid V is wrestling Tyler Nitro, uh, who Tyler defeated um, Kid V's team in the full force elimination match um, um, in December. So we have that. And then um, we have some stuff. Nothing's official, but um, Monty Aries is there. The main shooter will be there. Uh, Owen Brody will be there. Um, uh, Antonio Zambrano uh, will be there. He's a young guy uh, out of New York. Um, and then the mass hole, Mike McCarthy, um, who when he said that he was going to start taking bookings, he was, I don't think I could have hit, typed my message any faster and hit send. Um, just because Mike is one of the most... For lack, he warming, you know, uh, for lack of a better word, and I don't want to sound gushy because I know he's like this punk rocker, and but you know, he Mike Mike McCarthy has probably the biggest heart of gold that I've ever met in this business. Um, he's willing to do, he's willing to go out there and die for you and those fans if that's what you ask him to do. Not that I will ever ask him to do that. I can't, I can't wait for the show. I am. What weekend is it again? It was January 21st. I had a feeling that was the weekend it was, and I was really hoping you were going to say a different weekend. <laughs> I, sadly, we can't go in person, but um, definitely, if you're listening, definitely uh, definitely hit it up because it's a great card. I was, I was excited to see it, but uh, we'll, the two of us, will we're going on a little bachelor's, a bachelor party on that weekend. So sadly, we'll miss out, but we will be at APW events in the future. I mean, the the shows and the people I got, you know, we're bringing, I, I've kind of ventured out of New England for 2020 to 2023, and I'm bringing in guys like Steve Stetson, Antonio Zambrano, Pedro Domes, um, Spencer Slade, who works down in Maryland, um, primarily Maryland, Pennsylvania area. So I'm bringing in talent that not doesn't necessarily work up here. Um, while maintaining my core roster and that's what i'm most excited about me too i remember pedro dones made the appearance at uh, a lot of the clipper city rumble we're in and he's 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 a guy i really like to watch really good and also i saw um in your february card you have ichiban coming who's also one of my personal favorites ichiban uh, i'll break it right now at december show ichiban is wrestling Monty aries the main shooter so oh, I love that because I even commented on Facebook. I was like, That's I knew, the match you, I I knew you did. That's why I waited to tonight. I was going to respond to you. And I was like, I'll just tell him on the show tonight. Oh, I love it. I love it. That's the perfect matchup. That's that's what I was hoping would happen. I love I love yeah, to that's hear what's happening. So. All right, man. Well, now will that leads us now that you made my dream match come true. I can ask the final question and um. What's a dream match that you'd like to book? Any any wrestler, any just say like uh, no limitations here. It doesn't have to be a New England guy. It can be alive or dead. Just a match that you would love to book on any show that you're uh, managing. Stone Cold Steve Austin versus Kenny Omega. Just the promos alone, I think that one would be really good. Yep. Um, the contrasting styles in their in ring um the way they both speak i just feel like you put that on a wrestlemania card and that's probably the building sold out for sure and it, you know back in the day of pay-per-view it's probably one of the highest selling pay-per-views um of all time can, if kenny omega can make a, a blow-up doll look good in a wrestling match that is very true. We also saw Steve Austin main event WrestleMania last year, so it's, it's still a possibility. <laughs> it is. I mean, you know, he started working out again, so of course everybody's speculating that he's got one more in him. So we'll have to see. The only thing I don't like is the two-night thing. They need to go back to one night. I only like it because I can uh, I can have a few beverages while I'm watching the Saturday night one and not too, be weird, <laughs> too worried about work on Monday. True. I haven't, I, I, I don't know when the last time I had a drink was. 
<laughs> no, no drinks from now until April 29th because I'm going on a cruise for my 50th birthday. My wife's taking me on a cruise, so we got the drink package. It's going to be a hell of a week. I imagine that'll be a, quite the trip if it's going to be that long without alcohol. <laughs> oh, I've, I've actually gone, believe it or not, the longest I've ever gone without alcohol was probably 18 months. And I didn't lose any traction when I decided to drink. I was the same place I was before. I'm a big guy. I was in the military. I'm a professional drinker. <laughs> I can say that as a 25-year-old myself, too, that I uh, drinking still definitely within my wheelhouse. <laughs> like you say, we're going, we're going to a Mohegan for our buddy's bachelor. So, you know, I'm, we're going to have plenty there, too, I'm sure. No. God, I remember batch the parties where we we have one friend that never drinks. He's never had a drink in his life. We would rent Winnebago's and then we'd get, you know, those plastic tubs. We would get those, fill them up with ice and beer and then put them in the in the uh, the shower of the Winnebago. And then there'd, there'd be like 15 of us in there. We we start, we drive to Rhode Island, go to a couple gentlemen's clubs, and then end up in the Foxwoods of Mohegan Sun parking lot. And, park in the long-term parking and we take the the little the, the you know the car would come and bring us to the and bring us back to our thing it's the best thing in the world well juices is juice is uh one of his groomsmen so he's gonna have to uh take notes for that one <laughs> well mike we appreciate your time tonight and you know the deal that we do with our last few minutes here we like to let the guests plug and promote anything they have going on so with that the floor is yours yeah so uh what we have coming up obviously january 21st new Braveport um at the elks lodge um the home of apw we have revolution two um and then february 11th we're back in new Braveport. um um don't really know exactly what the matches are going to look like there, but we will have new tag team champions on that show. Uh, Nico Silva will be defending his heavyweight championship against uh, someone at that point. And then the biggest one I'm looking forward to is February 25th, the debut in Derry, New Hampshire, I'm calling the show Space Town Showdown. Um, after uh, the you know the the Astros and um, I can't even think of the guy's name right now. Buzz Aldred, is that his name from, from Derry? Um, so um, I'm looking forward to that. And main eventing that card, Brian Malonis will be wrestling Spencer Slade. Um, so der- hometown boy Brian Malonis in Derry um, on February 25th. And as I just broke here um, for Justin or, or Juice over there, is that uh, Ichiban is going to be wrestling the main shooter, Mani Aries. Um, so, uh, that's two matches there. So I'm excited. And then obviously the remainder of the year, everything, all of the schedule is up on our Facebook page. Um, and you know, uh, some exciting new faces, new talent, some new directions for other people. Um, we may or may not be making an announcement about a, a one night only all female show to crown the new APW or women's champion. Um, coming up at one of our shows here over the next uh, few couple of months, um, because I think that that's something that we got away from this year. Um, and I think that we need to get back to focusing on uh, the basics and, and women's wrestling in general. Well, I can speak for both of us when I say we'll definitely be on the lookout for that, for sure. And again, Mike, we just want to say thank you so much for joining us, brother. It's always a pleasure to talk with you both on the podcast and at shows, and I'm sure we'll see you soon. Absolutely. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, And I appreciate the time. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Top of the Cage. I mean, we didn't really go anywhere. I don't know why I always say that. Like, it's still Top of the Cage, but it's Mike is no longer with us right now. Uh, it's just me and Bill back at it again to close out the show. And that was a great interview with Mike once again. 
Um, there's not really much more to add. Uh, I love hearing his takes on New Japan. Um, I mean, uh, Monet Banks, and uh, he did spoil the card a little bit for me because before the show, I was watching it. And I was gonna finish before, and I did a really good job at staying away from spoilers. But what can you do? <laughs> I'm curious which which was the spoiler for you. Uh, the Kenny match. <laughs> I uh, I made sure the really the only spoiler I saw was the money banks, the banks thing, which isn't a spoiler because I knew that was coming. Like everyone knew that was coming. But um, yeah, I, I was I did a really good job staying away from um, outcomes. I only had three more matches to watch, including that one. And um, <laughs> yeah, you know, but what can you do, man? Um, you know, it'll still be a great match. I'm still going to watch it. It doesn't change anything, really. Mm-hmm. It is definitely up there already for match of the year contender. 2023 is starting off hot in the world of pro wrestling. And I think, uh, you know, the independent wrestling scene, especially APW, also going to be starting off hot coming into 2023. And Mike did apologize if he spoiled anything for anybody. So at least he apologized to you preemptively. <laughs> But yes, please make sure you guys are checking out APW. All their links are below. They have a ton of great stuff coming up in 2023, and I'm super excited to check in on it all. And of course, you can check in on us as the year 2023 progresses, and you can do all of that on our social medias. So Juice, let the people know where they can find us. People, this is where you can find us. You go to the Twitter, has the blue, has the, the little bird icon. And you type capital T, capital O, capital T, capital C, underscore, capital P, lowercase O, lowercase D. Then you go over to Instagram and another window or other app on your phone, wherever you're you're using, and you type T-O-T-C, underscore, P-O-D, all lowercase, because that's what you got to do on the Instagrams. Yes, and as we come crashing down to the map, on this episode of Top of the Cage, I want to thank you all so much for tuning in. And if you are listening to us on Apple or Spotify, you do not leave us a five-star review. That means that you, specifically you, that person not leaving us that five-star review, will not get five-star content. And that is just a fact. Fact. And again, thank you all so much for tuning in. And we will catch you next time.